Hey there, so today I will show you some of the commands that we can use in order to go through folders, edit edit files without even using the mouse. Okay, let's just start with the beginning. So the first command, I will, I will show you an example why using command lines can be can be can be easier sometimes than using the mouse or can make you productive. So for example, if I want to create multiple folders, I will go for images, CSS, and GS. Now I have some specific folders and I can even create a file by using touch command and no, sorry, I, I can rename the file because I do gs to main.gs. Now I have the correct file. As you see, I can create files and folders easily without even using the mouse. I can even use them to access all of that, create a new file or add a child node as an example. I will go for main build.gs. Now I have these files and I can navigate through files and all of that easily. And if we check a look here, you see me that I'm navigating through files, creating files without even using the mouse. And I can add all the folders, project, and I remove the folder. And I, kept, uh, I can keep navigating through files and folders without even using the mouse. I can even download files. And I can use this wcat to then download something. So as you see, I downloaded an image from a specific URL. And this is the image. And I move this image into the images folder. Now, if I check a look at all of that, and I can access to all of that by using Vim. And that's it. This is just a simple idea of, of how you can do something faster when you are using the command lines. Now that I show you that, let's just move to some basic command that I'm using. Personally, I'm not here showing you the, the commands in details, but I will just try to keep it simple and we'll go the, the ones that I'm using personally. Okay, let's just remove everything. Now I have an empty folder. The first command that we'll learn, we'll learn here is PWD. What this command do exactly? And if you want to get some information about any command you want, just type man, which is the manual, then pwd, and it will tell you that this command is just return the working directory name. What I mean by that? So, for example, if I'm typing pwd, just to show you where you are located. So, in our case, I'm inside user the desktop Linux commands, and it will show me so the working directory. And as I already said, if you want to get some information about the command you are using, just type the man PWD. It will show you some of the information and other options that you can use. I don't use all of them. I only use the PWD to show me the work in the directory. And you can just navigate through this file by using the, the directions top and the bottom. And once you want to quote, just type Q, then you will quote the file. Now let's just move to the other one. The other one is to list the folder. I'm using the ls, and if you want to get some information, I use man ls, and it will show me some other options that I can use, and I will quit. But even when I'm typing ls, I have nothing. So this command is showing nothing because we don't have any folder. And to create a folder, just use mkdir directory mkdir, and this is for creating a folder. And you just name the folder. So for example, let's just go for project. Or let's just go for CSS. Now I use the command, then the name of the folder. I can create multiple ones. Let's just create one. Now, if I use ls to list the folders and the files within the specific folder, it just gave me that I have a CSS folder. I can use the same command to create multiple, multiple folders and I go for images and GS. So by using a space, you can define any 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 folder you want. Don't you, you can't create files by using this this command right here. You just need to create. If you want to create folders, use it. Now I have multiple folders, and if I type ls, and you will find that there is multiple folders right here. Then, if you want to, if for example, creating a hidden folder. Uh, the hidden folder is just a folder that starts with a dot. So for example, if I create a git, let's just initialize this, this folder. So to use git, by using git init. Now, if I use ls, 
I will have this .git folder. Why? Because it's considered as the hidden folder. And to show this hidden files, personally, I use this ls dash a l l or ls all. It will give me all of the information. Not only show me the hidden folders, but it will show me so the the permissions and the user and the group and all of the information that's here. So the date and this time, all of this will show me this ls dash all, it will show you everything. So the hidden files or anything is hidden. So in this case, I'm creating a hidden file vmrc, it's considered as the dot file. And all the dot files or anything hidden will show you this ls dash all. And you can use it. But if you are not interested with all, with all of this other information, just type ls and you will get the files and the folders. And to create a file, I use this touch and I just create index.html. So to create a file, now you will see if I type ls, you will see that it lists me the files and the folders. And if I use ls all, it will list me the files, the folders, the hidden files, the hidden folders, and the other interesting information, the permission, the users, and all of that. All of that can be interesting if you want to just switch the user or if you want to change the permissions of the files. And we will get into that in this lesson. Okay, now I create a file by using this touch index.html. And what if I want to get some text on this index.html? I want to add something. So to add something within the index.html, I can use Vim or nano. Okay, let's just use vim. In my case, I, I, I have vim installed. And I just need I can add some text on on this file. And to save it, I will okay, let's just open that again to see that I use vim. So the command vim, then the name of the file index.html if it exists. Okay, now I just type I then I'll add some text. I to why I'm typing I just to switch from the normal mode to the insert mode. If you don't get it on how to use Vim, I have already a lesson. I have some lessons so that details all of that. You can go through that. But in general, I will not go into the details on how to use Vim because it's need a specific course. I already have a free course which have some videos you can go through that to understand Vim more in a more accurate way. But this is how I just switch from the normal mode into the insert mode by typing I, then I add some text within the HTML file and to save, to save the file, just type control C, then though, and then I can type this right here. You will see me that this colon, then WQ, which means that I run a write, then quit the file. Now, if I just open the file again, you will see that the text exists. Another way to Let's just remove this index.html and to remove a file, we'll use rm. And another way to, to add some text into an into index.html, I can use, let's just create a new file. I will go for readme.txt. Okay, now I have an empty file, readme.txt. It has nothing because I created, I created an empty file. And to add something, you can use vim. Or the other way you can use the echo, then the text you want to add, let's just go for hello world. Then I add this greater than, greater than, then the name of the file, readme.txt. Okay. I think that this code is just create a problem. To just show what I have inside. Okay, I need to avoid this double quotes. I will use single quotes instead. Okay, now if I show read me. Good. Now, as you see, when I use double quotes right here, it's just create me some problems, and it, it will not write into the text file. But what does echo do exactly? So I can add any text I want within the readme.txt. I can add, for example, yep, into this readme.txt without even opening the file. Now, if I open the readme.txt, you will find that I have yep even without opening the file. And this is a great way if you want to add some text within a file, even without even opening the file by using Vim or Nano. Now, what did Nano? Nano is just like Vim, but it's simpler than Vim. And I'll open this readme.txt to add some text. I can add some text. And, the one, and let's just take a look to that. And the, these are the shortcuts. Once I just type 
control C and I will just type X, sorry, control C or control X, sorry, to save. I, I, I don't use nano launch, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Vim user. Then I will tell you save and modify the buffer. So just type Y, then it will save all of that. Now just save enter and it will exit everything. And this is just a better way. So if you want to just edit the text, so you have Vim, you have a code to add some text and you have nano. Nano and Vim to edit and uh, echo to add some text without even opening the file. And you want to just remove a, remove a file, use RM. Now, when using RM, you can remove a file. If I use this RM and readme.txt, so you add once I use ls, you see that readme.txt doesn't exist because I remove it. And if you want to remove a folder, you have two choices. You can use this RM dash r and rm dash r and then the name of the folder you can even mo remove multiple folders but let's just stick to that and ls you see that css is removed or css is deleted now if i can also remove, uh, without using this recursive because this is an option that telling that i want to remove a folder because if you just use rm without this dash dash r and i use gs as an example so it will tell you that GS is a directory, so you can't use it because it means to be used with files, not folders. And if you want to use a command without using this option dash R, so you can just use RM dir or remove directory and use the GS folder. Now it's remove the folder. So you have the choice between choosing RM RM dash R and RM directory. Okay, choose one, so that you can, but personally I use this one, so because it's more, much simpler, because sometimes I wanna switch between removing a file and then removing a folder, then I switch, and then I stick to this one, so this is what I'm using a lot. And for example, if you wanna move a folder or a file, let's just create another folder. I create another folder, CSS, then I wanna move the folder CSS into Let's just create another folder, yes. Okay, and I'll create a folder, project one, project one. Then if I wanna move a folder CSS into project one, as an example, I just need to use MV, which is move, then the folder that I wanna move, the source, then the destination. So the destination in our case is project one. So which means that I'm using the move command to move the CSS folder into the project one folder. Now I hit enter and CSS doesn't exist right here. Then if I enter to the project one, you will see that CSS it is inside the project one. And if you wanna just take a look on the working directory, you just use the PWD, you see that I'm inside the project one. And to get into the previous, to enter, so to enter to folders, you just use CD. And to get into the previous folder, you CD dot dot, say CD, then, project, the name of the folder, cd.touch will get you to the previous one. If I want to enter to the cd, to the other folder, I will cdgs, then I'm inside the gs folder, and you can just keep using that. I think that I need to remove this git folder because it's annoying a little bit. Okay, I was all I was already on the move of an mv command, so I can move the gs folder inside the project one, and I can enter to the project one folder, then I can move the GS folder from project one to the previous one, which means that it will go to the Linux command. And so while I'm using this dash dot slash, because just tell answer that you need to move the GS folder to the previous folder. I can even do that, move GS dot 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 slash dot dot slash. So it will just go not deeper by, by two directories, by two levels. And now if we check the GS folder is not inside project one, it is inside the Linux command. You can move a file. Okay, let's just create a file, index.html. You can move a file inside and use ls. Now we have the index.html within the Linux commands. You can move this index.html without, within, sorry, the project one. Now index.html is not inside the, the Linux commands, and let's just list the project one, 
and you will see that in desktop HTML inside project one. What you see me do here is using the list command. I keep switching between commands because I can't just use one and just teach you one and focus on one. You will see me switching between them and teaching you each one because this is the way I'm using them. And they wanna teach you the way I'm using these commands. And you can use the list command, then the name of the folder without even doing a CD, then go into the project one, then LS, but you can just use the LS, then the name of the folder and hit enter. And it will show you the, the files and the folder that's within this, this specific folder. You can just go deeper project one, then CSS. And if it, if it is something within the CSS folder, it will show you that, but it's empty, I have nothing. Okay, I think that's it. But sometimes you can just find me writing commands and all of that. And I just want to clear the screen. So you can use clear or you can just hit control L, which will clear everything without without writing this clear, then hit enter. You just see me type in control L and it will clear the screen just to get to the top and write wherever you want. Okay, what you will learn so far, we'll learn to use CD to access to folders. We'll learn how to use ls to list the files and hide the files. We'll learn to use vim and to open a file and edit it. We'll learn to use nano to edit or to add some text into a file. We'll learn to use touch to create a file. We'll learn to use echo to add some text within within a file e even without opening it. We'll, now, we'll learn how to use clear to clear the screen. And we'll learn to use mkdir directory to create a new folder and we'll learn how to use mm directory or remove directory to remove a directory. We will learn how to use, how to remove a folder by using rm and the name of the folder. Then we'll learn how to use rm-r to remove a folder or to remove a file recursively. So in this case, you can remove a folder by using this one. And we'll learn to use pwd to, to have an idea on the working directories will give you where we are located, uh, where we are located of the working directory. And all of this command can be super useful if you wanna just navigate through the files and be more productive. And I hope this video is super useful. And if you have any questions, so leave me the question in the comment section and I'll happy to answer.